أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا نبتو ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين يا كان عبد ويا كان استعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين Today you are gathered here for your ishtama and as we have listened to the report, it was quite successful, alhamdulillah. I hope and pray that you all would have derived great benefit and blessings from this event. May Allah enable you all of you to do so. One important matter for you all to remember, and this is something that I have said many times before, is that prior to your birth, your parents pledged your lives for the service of Islam. The scheme of Akhfinaw was set up by Hazrat Khalifatul Masih the fourth with the intention that the Jamaat required vast manpower for the sake of propagation of the message of Islam. Hazur had in mind that few dozens or even hundreds of people would not be enough. Instead, truly vast numbers were required to fulfill the great purpose of serving Islam. Thus, the blessed scheme was set up, and your parents pledged your lives with the same intentions shown by the mother of Hazrat Maryam. Before the birth of her unborn child, it is mentioned in the Holy Quran in Surah Al Imran about how Hazrat Maryam's mother prayed. The prayer was, Rabbi inni nazar to laka maafi batni muharraran fataqabal minni inna ka anta samiyul alim. My Lord, I have owed to thee what is in my womb to be dedicated to the service, so do thou accept it of me. Verily, thou alone art all hearing, all knowing. I pray that Allah accepts the similar prayer of your mothers and makes you a useful asset to the Jamaat. Many of you have now reached an age of full maturity in terms of your intelligence 
and capabilities. Many of you have been educated to a high level and are studying in sciences and many other fields in, US, in universities, colleges and universities. Therefore, you must realize that if you want to fulfill the, pledge, the pledges made by your parents, then once you reach the age of 15, it is necessary for you to renew the covenant that they made on your behalf. And I hope almost all of you must have done that. Without your personal renewal, you can never understand your true responsibilities. This is a point which I have reminded all of you many times, and so I am hopeful that those of you who are above 15 have renewed their bond. You must also remember that simply to renew your pledge is not and can never be enough. Instead, you must bear in mind that it is up to you to undertake great effort to accomplish the great responsibilities that you bear. In a Friday sermon that I delivered in October 2010, I spoke about the responsibilities of Wakfinaw children. Although the parents of Wakfinaw children have pledged the lives of their children for the service of Islam. And it is their responsibility to do the good tarbiyat of their children and to bring them up in a way that they become true servants of Islam. However, it is also the responsibility of each waqfino that the, he tries his utmost to conduct his daily life in a way that is befitting and appropriate to a Wakfino. To do this, it is essential that you try and become closer to Allah the Almighty. And also, with Every day that passes, the love you hold for the Holy Prophet, Hz. Muhammad وسلم, should increase. Furthermore, you should display total loyalty to the Prophet Messiah al-Islam and full obedience to Khilafat. Also in your daily life, you should hold the nizam that the system, the organization of the Jamaat dearer than anything else. Only when you begin to manifest the qualities will you start to truly fulfill the responsibility placed on you as a member of Wakfino. Thus, as I have said earlier, it is essential for you to understand your responsibilities, which is that you should conduct your every act and deed according to the true Islamic teachings. <clears throat> when you are sitting or standing or when you are meeting others, your every act and word should be conducted with better manners and goodness as compared to 
others. Otherwise, people will have the opportunity to allege that character of this Vakfe now, child or young, youngster is not of a high standard. The most important duty for an Ahmadi man is to live a righteous life. Many of you have now reached an age where you should understand your responsibilities according to the teachings of Islam. To be able to fulfill this responsibility, it is essential that you increase your religious knowledge because without such understanding, you cannot live your lives according to the teachings of Islam. And furthermore, you cannot raise your future generations to understand and abide by its beautiful teachings. Therefore, to have religious knowledge is extremely important. The most fundamental and greatest form of religious knowledge is, of course, the Holy Quran. To form a relationship with Allah and the Holy Prophet, وسلم, the most important and crucial requirement is to do the tilawat of the Holy Quran daily and regularly. However, tilawat alone is not enough. You have to study and learn the translation and inner meaning of the Holy Quran. And for that, you should also make it a habit of taking notes so that you can have an in-depth understanding of it. Here, I would like to draw your attention to a very important thing, which is for an in-depth understanding or knowledge of the Holy Quran, you should study the commentaries which are available in both English and Urdu. Always remember that it is truly essential for each Vakfe now to gain knowledge of the Holy Quran. Here I would like to quote an excerpt from the writings of the of Hazrat Muhammad He writes in his book Kishti Anu that be alert all the time and do not take a single step contrary to divine teaching and the guidance of Quran. I tell you truly that anyone who evades the least one of, of the 700 commandments of the Quran shuts upon himself the door of salvation. The ways of true and perfect salvation have been opened by the Quran, and all the rest is its reflection. Therefore, study the Quran with care and hold it very dear with a love that you have not for anything else. As God has said to me, Al Khairu Kulluhu fil Quran. All good is contained in the Holy Quran. This is wholly true. Those people are to be pitied who prefer anything else to it. The fountainhead of all your prosperity and salvation is the Holy Quran. There is no religious need of yours which is not filled by the Quran. On the day of judgment, the Quran will confirm or deny your faith. There is no other book under heaven beside the Quran which can furnish you with salvation. God has been very beneficent towards you that he has bestowed a book like the Quran upon you. I tell you truly that if the book that is recited to you 
had been recited to the Christians, they would not have perished. If this bounty of guidance, which has been bestowed upon you, had been bestowed upon the Jews in place of the Torah, some of their sects would not have denied the Day of Judgment. Then value this favor that has been bestowed upon you. It is a very dear favor. It is great wealth. If the Quran had not been revealed, the whole world would have been left like a dirty lump of flesh. The Quran is the book in contrast with which all other guidance amounts to nothing. <clears throat> From hearing this quote, you will have realized just how valuable and important the Holy Quran is to an Ahmadi Muslim. Similarly, you can see how import important it is for a Wakfino member to follow and act upon all the principles and teachings of the Holy Quran. When you read the Holy Quran regularly and purposely try to follow its teachings, then new paths of righteousness and new paths leading towards Allah will emerge. When you follow the teachings of the Holy Quran, then you will be able to call yourself a true Wakfino. Also of vast importance are the books of the Prophet Musayah al-Islam. You can start with some of the books for the latter years of the Prophet Musayah, if you wish, because they are somewhat easier to understand. Those who can read and understand Urdu should read the writings of the Prophet Messiah directly. And those who cannot read Urdu should read the English translation that have been printed by the Jamaat, or should read the volumes of the Essence of Islam that have been printed in some volumes, which contains the excerpts from the books of the Prophet Muhammad Islam and cover different topics and issues. If you are able to attain such knowledge, then it will, be, it will automatically be a means of your good, uh, of your good tarbiyat, and you will become an ambassador for the Jamaat. To increase your religious knowledge and education, the most important factor is dua, that is prayer. Until you do not become involved in prayer and do not develop a relationship with Allah, all your religious knowledge will be of no use. Remember that we do not seek religious knowledge just for the sake of it. As I just said, it must coincide with earnest, sincere, and, uh, and earnest and sincere prayer so that the knowledge that you have gained will be a means, of, uh, means to improve your spiritual progress. When this happens, then worldly players and everyday means of play and fun will come to vanish from your lives. And when such worldly pursuits and players are eradicated, it is then that the real spirit of waqf e will emerge in each of you, inshallah. In the same regard, you should always remember and understand the reality of your chosen religion. If you do not understand Islam's reality, 
then as an Ahmadi and as a Vakfe now, how can you guide others towards it? Living in the Western society, certain complexes can develop. However, it is Allah's great favor that He has granted us the opportunity of accepting the Prophet Messiah Islam, who has explained to us the true re reality of Islam in this era. In this regard, Hazrat Masimud Salatu Islam writes, first of all, it is necessary to set out what is the reality of Islam? What are the means of arriving at that reality? And what are the fruits of following that reality? For this knowledge is essential for the purpose of understanding many mysteries. It would be of great benefit for our opponents from among the Muslims, that they should study these matters with attention for many of the doubts which assail their minds are the result of their failure to reflect upon the complete and perfect reality of Islam, its source, its sources and its fruits. The, opponent, the opponents of religion also would benefit greatly by this study, they would understand what religion is and what are the signs of its truth. In the idiom of Arabic, Islam means money paid as earnest to conclude a bargain or to commit some affair to someone or to seek peace or to surrender a claim or point. The technical meaning of Islam is set out in the verse, Bala man aslama wajahu lillahi wa huwa mosinun falahu ajruhu in the rabbihi. Wala khawfun alayhim wala hum yahzanun. This means that a Muslim is one who commits himself wholly to the cause of God Almighty. That is to say, one who devotes himself to God Almighty, to following his designs and to winning his player, and then becomes steadfast in doing good for the sake of God Almighty and devotes all his faculties to that cause. In other words, he belongs entirely to God Almighty, both doctrinally and in practice. Doctrinal belonging means that one should esteem one's being as, as something which has been created for the recognition of God Almighty and His obedience and the seeking of His love and player. Practical belonging means to do all the good that is related to every one of one's faculties with such eagerness and attention as if one beholds the countenance of the true beloved in the mirror of one's obedience. The Prophet Musayal Islam here has explained just how important it, it is for a Muslim to understand the true, true reality of Islam. Thus, if it is so necessary for an ordinary Muslim, then you can see that it is even more crucial and essential for a member of Akhwino to appreciate the reality of his religion. It is the responsibility of the Akhwino to understand the reality of Islam so that he can then live his life according to its teachings and principles. In the UK, there are hundreds of Waqfin and all. And if this new spirit develops amongst uh, all of you, then it will become a means to produce 
a religious atmosphere that will not only benefit the future generation, Uh, of the Jamaat, but will also be a means and a way for Islam's message to be propagated throughout the UK and indeed the world, inshallah. These days, Islam is being attack attacked all across the world, and much is being said and written in its opposition. So, you should stand to protect Islam. It is true that every Ahmadi boy and man sh should play his respective role in defending Islam. But it is also true that a Waqfino boy's role should, even, uh, uh, should be even greater. The reason for this is that, that the parents of the Waqfino boys have pledged that every second of their child's lives will be dedicated to the service of Islam. And after the age of 15, you have renewed your bond for the sake of the service of Islam. Understand your responsibility. In this Western society that you live in, come to shine like a bright light that has no connotation of worldly desires or amusements. Indeed, you should glow like a true beacon of spiritual light. I pray that this light becomes present in all of you. And if it does, then inshallah, you will remove the anxieties of both me and, my, uh, and, and uh, any future Khalifa, because from one example is another example born. The older among you are in the first and second batches of Waqfin and all. And so it is up to you to set the trend. So go ahead and become the trendsetters. In whichever field you are, be it a missionary, doctor, teacher, historian, economist, scientist, etc. You should try to show your brilliance. Set a good example that not only the people of your own era, but also those in future times come to pray for you. May Allah grant you the ability to fulfill these responsibilities. I would like, I would also like to say to the younger boys amongst you that in the same way that you focus on your schoolwork, you should give similar attention to your religious education. You should read and study the Waqfino syllabus that has been printed and so increase your religious knowledge. Furthermore, you should never miss a single prayer. And you, that is Damas, and you must develop the habit of reading the Holy Quran each and every day, even if it is just one ruku. We should always, you should, uh, you should also always be fully obedient to your parents, so much so that you become a positive example to your other brothers and sisters. It should not be that because you are a member of Akhfina that you feel superior in any way or that you deserve special attention or respect. In fact, it should be the other way around, that you should show others great respect and listen to your parents and elders. In your religious classes, it should be observed 
that you are children of the highest morals and best character in your schools, your teachers and fellow pupils should see you as the example to follow. The Vakfe Nau syllabus has been developed, as I have said, to the ages of up to 19 or 20. Therefore, every child should read the syllabus appropriate to their age. In this regard, both parents and the organizers should take note and make sure that children, uh, that children follow uh, and learn their syllabus to the letter. This will be a means to your good tarbiyat and training. May Allah grant all of you the ability to understand and fulfill your responsibilities. Now please join me in silent prayer. I mean...